What's up guys? In today's video I am out here mulching the garden. Now mulching is one of the most important things you can do for your garden. It really helps you keep the water in the soil, retain that water for very long periods of time, and ultimately not have to water your garden very often. I normally water my garden in the very early spring when I've just planted herbs or moved, transplant, moved transplants into the garden. I'll water very heavily then. But for the rest of the year, I'm really not watering very often. And that is thanks to my mulching technique. Now, I'm gonna grab some of it. My mulching technique is just basically a ton of straw stacked on top of each other, placed all over the open dirt in your garden. So you're gonna wanna plant it around every plant and make sure that any space that's just open soil is covered by straw. So I do that very early on in the spring and then I always do it again in midsummer and I'm going to do it again in the fall. So you are at my midsummer mulching and so I'm here to mulch the garden. And right now we are over here looking at two different plants. We've got beans. Let me go down a little bit lower. I've got some bush beans here that are producing very nicely. I really enjoy my bush beans. And then behind them I've got some tomatoes, and these are a specialty tomato. And they are getting eaten up by grasshoppers. So as I mulch, I like to look around and really see what the garden is doing. And then I have some really, really, really nice morning glory back here. So the Japanese beetles have focused on. Morning glories are a very nice detractor plant. They're great because you, they have their medicinal value on the my medicinal side of things. But for my companion planting, they also have a very nice companion value because all of those Japanese beetles, they'll be, they'd rather eat on those guys than they would on the rest of my tomatoes and my beans. But I, I love them for that and I love them for, for their medicine as well. But they're also a very nice companion. And then I also have germander. So if you look over in the garden over here, I have germander, which is awesome. A very good companion plant. It brings in the bumblebees and the butterflies. I got tons of bees in my germander this year, so it's a great companion plant, but it's also in this huge garden bed. So we are gonna get started. And um, so anytime I go to mulch again in the summer, it's just to retain the water that is, you know, in the soil from the rains. And we have been very lucky and we've had a couple of rains that have been really, really good rains that we didn't get last year. I remember last year around this time, we are in southern Missouri, about an hour north west of Springfield. Thanks, Fly. Um, but we did not get rains like we got this year, last year. Last year, around this time in July, it was completely brown. And the grass right now, as you can see behind me, is relatively green. So we're, we're looking good this year. But I really, because we've had a few sporadic rains, and so in order to retain that moisture that the rain brings in, just because it's rain, you want to add straw. And straw is really good because there's not gonna be seed heads in the straw. Um, straw is also really good because you can winterize your plants that way by using a lot of straw around it and mulching. You can also use, um, uh, what are they called, wood chips? Yeah, wood, I was like, I just spread them all over my garden everywhere, wood chips. You can also use wood chips on top of the mulch, but um, straw itself is really, really good to help your plants retain that moisture. So today we are, I mean, it's about 7.30 and we are gonna add some straw to my garden to retain the moisture from the rain we just got. So if you look over here, my tomatoes. And while we're at it, like I said, I'm gonna spray a little neem mixture. I don't even know if I said this, but I noticed that my tomato plants over here are looking a little, eh, not, not that wonderful. And it's because if you look really close, I have some branches. I'm sorry, sorry to sacrifice these tomatoes. But I have some branches that have been eaten up by tomato hornworms, okay? And tomato hornworms, when you've got branches that look like this, that's because you've got a tomato hornworm problem. And I'm so sorry, tomatoes, that I did this to you. I've been really neglecting my garden right now, certain areas of it. I'm so sorry, and I should be more on top of it, but luckily it didn't eat the entire plant. So I really didn't catch it too late. There's only a few pieces that look like this. That means I'm going to find a hornworm inside my tomato plant. I'm least happy about that because they're so gross. Let's be honest. They're so nasty. I mean, it's not the worst bug. We all know that's Japanese beetles for me, but hornworms are like right after it. They're just gross. And then I found out that they click at you. That's just, just 
disturbing in some way. I don't like that they do that. Now I know they're kind of like screaming at me in their language, right? If I can hear them, they're screaming in their language. So, uh, oh, hornworms, I'm going to find them and they're so gross. And they also do this to my tomatoes, so I'm really not happy. Sorry, I went on, off on a tangent. I will do that about hornworms. Bugs in general, I think my siblings would be shocked that I'm even out here handling the garden like I am these days. Because when I was growing up, I'm one of seven children, okay? I didn't like bugs. Wasn't a bug fan. <laughs> hated bugs wouldn't even go near a bug and now I appreciate the bugs that add value to the garden and I really detest the ones that don't and especially when they're nasty like a Japanese beetle or a hornworm what's the point oh gross so yeah a little bit about me right but let's go back to this is a uh, damage from a horned worm so sorry tomato plant now your plants not distraught for you won't it won't die away because of that you can still save it especially on a beautiful green plant like this. I mean, this plant here is a really healthy plant and the hornworm knows it and so it came in to eat it all. So let's fix that. And I do that, I know if you watch my channel all the time, you already know what I'm gonna say, but it's neem oil. Surprise, surprise, uh, neem oil. That is you get something you can buy on Amazon. Very easy to find on Amazon, but it's natural, pesticide free. It is fantastic at killing those pests that you don't want in there, like horned worms, but not harming your pollinators. It's really, really good stuff. Look up neem oil. Fantastic. Um, neem oil, and then I've got some soap in here, some just natural soap, okay? And then warm water, just warm water with all of those things. And I also added um, an emollient, okay? I really like to add to my soil. <laughs> so I added an emollient just to help my soil. Okay, so back to, but it's not gonna hurt the, the bugs. Well, it actually then grows really good fungi. So I guess it really does hurt the bugs because it brings in good things because of the good fungi. So yeah, well, I guess the mullion is really important too, but it's not the, what I'm looking to focus on to kill this pest right now, which is the horned worm. So I'm looking at the neem and the soap. So it's very warm water. The bottle is warm to the touch and I'm gonna spray it all over the plant. Now, if you can't tell, like I said before, it's about 7.30 at night. It is, the sun is going down. That's the time to spray neem. Do not spray it during the day. You will burn your leaves. It kind of, the burn that you get from um, the neem oil kind of looks like leaf rot. If you've ever seen that or like those brown spots that you get on your leaves, that's what it looks like when you burn your leaves. And then it'll turn kind of yellowish if you have like a neem oil burn. So be careful of that. You don't want to spray during the day to avoid neem oil burn. Now, as for the size of my bottle, bottle size. I mean, I don't know where, where are we? 25 florid ounces. That's where I am with this and neem oil. I mixed about a cap full, a little bit more than a cap full, which is maybe about an ounce of a neem oil and then a squirt or two of um, dish soap. So maybe two at uh, two tablespoons of dish soap or two teaspoons of dish soap, not tablespoons, and then warm water the rest of the way up. Now, when you spray it, you're going to spray the top of the leaves and the bottom of the leaves. Okay because you wanna make sure you're eradicating all of the pests in all areas of the plant and they will go live on the top and the bottom and they, they will lay eggs a lot of the times on the undersides of the plant. So make sure when you're spraying the neem and this mixture, you're getting the underside of the plant too. And you're gonna give it a nice, healthy spray. So now you're gonna watch me spray for a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of look for the hornworm as I'm spraying. I know he's in here. I didn't harvest tomatoes soon enough. He came and got them, and now he thinks he's gonna stay, but he's not. I will get him. And just heavily soak it. I mean, do not be afraid to use a lot of this mixture. Use a lot. I have a lot of blossoms. I'm excited. I have a better sprayer than this where it don't, you don't have to pump it every single time. It's really cool. You like pump it like this and then it builds up the energy inside Then you release it and it'll just kind of spray uh, everywhere for you. Should have found that for this video. <laughs> you get the idea though, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just teaching what you're trying to do here. And you can spray it all over the fruits. It's not going to hurt your fruits at all. Um, I've sprayed neem and then eaten beans off it right after. Now with the soap in there, it's kind of gross, let that evaporate a little bit before you're eating the beans maybe, but the neem itself isn't going to hurt. Neem's kind of stinky. 
So if you've never smelled neem, when you do smell it, you're going to be like, hmm, that's kind of a gross smell. <laughs> like you'll know neem. You will know neem. But it's not something you can't stand. And I'm very shocked I haven't found the hornworm. So give me a second. I want to see if I can find it. They're gross too. So when I do, I'm going to be grossed out. But... No way, it just moved on by itself without a predator involved, and the spoon cat got up in there. I don't know. Well, shocking stuff, but anyways, so what I do, and if I found an area like this while I'm mulching, you're going to spray neem all over it. But let's get to the mulching now. Okay. So I have regular straw, like I said, no seed heads are in there. You're going to open it up. Oh, how close can you see? Maybe I'll get in there. I like to work in the bed, so maybe it'd be better if I filmed myself in the bed here, right? Okay. I'm going to get up in the bed. Okay. So as you can see, inside my bed, I still have a bunch of like mulch already there, but there's also a ton of weeds in there. And so that's why it's really important to do the second summer batching because you're gonna have a ton of weeds that keep coming up and you're pulling them and pulling them. And that's constantly kind of like disrupting the soil. And so as it's disrupting the soil, you wanna replace that straw that mulch and keep your layer about three or four inches thick. That's the root stout method. Like that's the way you're going to be able to kill out the weeds, really just suffocate them and then keep and in keep and retain the moisture. So that's the point of the root stout method. And if you don't have enough straw, it's not going to work. So I think a lot of people that kind of hate on the root stout method are like, oh, it never works. There's weeds everywhere. Uh, you know, I can never retain moisture. Well, you're probably not doing it right. I'm just going to say, you probably suck at it. And that's okay. You can get better. I suck at it a lot of things. And I'm trying to get better all the time. But don't hate on the method. Maybe hate on the your application of it. But root stout method for me has worked great. And I try to keep it three or four inches thick. And when I do see, I think this is Kentucky crab crabgrass, man. Kentucky bluegrass. Someone's going to correct me. I don't know exactly what kind of grass this is. It's kind of annoying in the garden. Not going to lie. Uh, very, very webby. Okay, so when it's growing, it's like <laughs> crisscross patch. So very fun grass, all right? And I get a lot of it in these beds. And it's because the soil that I brought in, I mean, when I filled these beds, I filled them three quarters of the way thick with huge logs. As many logs as I could get in here, it's at least three quarters of the way thick and you can still actually see the logs. Look at this log. One of the ones I filled it with. You can still see them everywhere, but eventually they're going to decompose down and they're gonna be beautiful soil. But the soil that I brought in with it, the top soil, it had a lot of that grass in there. So it's been um, strong. It's been pretty strong. Uh, so yeah, that's been fun to handle. Always a challenge, right? Let's, let's overcome them. But yeah, so there's a lot of that grass in there. So I think another layer of the mulch will do me well to get rid of that crap. I mean, grass. Okay, so I'm going to pull out as much as I can, like as much as I can see. Maybe it would be helpful if you could see what I was doing, right? Okay, any of the grasses that I can see just right on top, I'm going to go ahead and just pull. Look at this dude. My God. Okay, let me just, holy cow. No? 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 <laughs> Not annoying, right? Not annoying. Just strong grass. Ah. Anyways, I'm going to mulch all over that. <laughs> One of the reasons I want to mulch. It's incredible to see that root go all, just, wow. Is there a medicinal value in this? Let me look that up later. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to mulch all around your plant. As you can see here, I've got tomatoes that are growing beautifully, and I've got beans, and these are bush beans. Let me see if I have any in here. Not right now. Lots of flowers. We've done lots of picking, but I don't have any. So let's go ahead, and you are going to apply the new straw all the way around it, even up underneath the plant itself, okay? 
Here we go. I've got my straw. I stabbed my bag. I like to use a sharp object to get it open. I've noticed I have zero luck getting it open if I don't. And it's just like pulling this. Okay, I'm going to grab this here. If anyone has a local supply of straw, you let me know. I will be happy to invest. Okay. Sorry, hopefully you see. Okay, I'm going to get my straw out. And I'm going to pull it out of my bag. Excuse me. Let's rip my bag a little more. Well, props to the packaging company, right? <laughs> Super strong plastic. Okay. That's better. There we go. Give yourself some nice handfuls and get up under there. But, man, they say these are bush beans. Are you sure? You sure? Looking poly to me, right? Okay. And like I said, I've already got a few inches of straw there. So maybe only two inches, I'm guessing, is what I'll add. It seems about right. There's no measuring stick, you know. It just seems about four inches thick total if I add around two inches. I don't know. Something like this. And watch out for snakes. Oh, my gosh. We found... Eight, nine, eight or nine snakes total. I mean, just right up in here. So where this overlaps, so we made these beds last year and where they overlap right here, like one portion of it is overlapped in the other. And then we put some screws in to put it down. <laughs> snake city, lots of snakes. So watch out. They weren't mean, but they were kind of shocking. Like, whoa, wow. And there's eight or nine of you. So yeah, let's, let's watch out for those. But you just keep packing it in. I found more grass. I'm just going to pull it out as I find it. Hopefully you can see. It's pretty good. And some of the um, leaves as you go on the plants you want to save, some of them are going to get covered. And you're just going to have to deal with it. But for a lot of them, you can pull them up and pull them out of there and manipulate the plant where you won't cover it. You won't kill it. The plant's not going to die. It's not going to get hurt at all. It's actually going to get healthier and better and better and better. So you're going to go all the way around the plants, and that's just what I'm going to do right now. And as you can see on the bottom, so we added our roof style stuff to the bottom. I mean, I've still got weeds that are coming up through there. It's just, if you're really adamant about it, it's important to stay on top of it. Get them out of there. Pull them out and then reset your wood tips on top of it so it doesn't happen again right i mean fix the problem and keep it from happening over and over again my goodness look at that one of them i just got on a polling frenzy one time <laughs> uh holy cow these things go on for miles i'm telling you miles miles I didn't see that because I stopped well before that, but honestly, not short of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I stopped well before that, but it was shocking at how much, I mean, how intricate the whole root network system was. And I've said this in other, oh my gosh, I said this in other videos before, just that, uh, sorry, and then brush this over as you're pulling, brush it back on top and you can continue to do this till this fall. And then fix it all it shouldn't happen again next year but um oh gosh korean natural farming really talks about the importance of the health of the soil right versus the plants themselves like the plants are only a reflection of the soil in which they grow in so it's important to feed the soil and that's why i added that microbial emollient earlier it's really good for the soil it focuses on the soil. Are you guys even seeing what I'm doing? I really hope so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think soil health is just really important stuff. So this is supposed to be a mulching video and here I am weeding. So it's a mulch slash weeding video, but it just shows you, I guess when I'm mulching, I'm constantly thinking about regular garden maintenance and upkeep and you know, what's going to help me in the future. And so I'm not always just trying to go there. Like, I guess I go there with the goal of getting done what I had in mind, but I'm open to the, the idea of changing that goal and then being, you know, seeing 
oh wow, a lot of weeds grew up along the side of the bed. That'd be annoying because then they'd grow up and there'd be grasshopper eggs on the weeds. And then the grasshoppers would come in here and continue to eat my tomatoes, which is so sad because I'm growing a ton of really cool varieties this year. But look what's happening. These darn grasshoppers. Look at this. Beautiful tomato. And then, dun, dun, dun. let's not do that again. You know, it's a bummer. But that's what I do out here when I'm mulching <laughs> is I'm constantly thinking of, how can I make it better for me next time? How can I make it easier for me next time? And one way that I found to do that is by using that roost out method and really adding a ton of straw to your beds. If you garden in beds, add it that way. If you're gardening straight, I am just, you know, the tilling the ground thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. I got a lot of farmers that watch this that do that. But for me, root stout is so much better and I'm gonna be doing some really cool things coming up um, with some really cool things. And so I, I'm gonna tell you guys about that more later as it, it develops. But as I've been looking into that and working on those ideas and figuring out how that's gonna work for Grandpa and Farm, I'm thinking, you know, these methods have really been working well and they really provide me with this root, to, uh, this pathway forward when it comes to a lot of problems that farmers are having with drought because a lot of farmers are experiencing drought and everyone's wondering ah it's drought we won't be able to grow anything are you sure because part of me thinks you could use the root stout method and grow a lot still you know and i don't know i think that people give up kind of easily sometimes on um if traditional isn't working let's just stop there and I don't think that's the way to go. I think that we should keep going. And this really hurts. Don't sit like that. That doesn't feel good on the wood chip. So, um, but anyways, I mean, this is kind of going to be a long video. But what I would do is I would continue to mulch around all the plants. I'm going to continue to do that. If you want to hop off, I already said that five minutes ago. And then I went on my rant, right? So I guess you got an extra special treat if you stuck around for my mulching. You got to see my, my rant. Or an extra special, uh, not treat. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. But, um... Yeah, I just mulch around it. Now, next year, all these tomato plants, or all these tomatoes that are falling off and have been half eaten by grasshoppers, it's really all's not lost. It's really all's not lost because those, oh, that was horrible. Shake that off, don't. Inhibit its ability to obtain sun and do the photosynthesis process. But it's not all lost because next year, so the seeds from these tomatoes that have been unable to be eaten by the Graham family due to the grasshoppers, I mean the grasshoppers and these hornworms, um, they, the, the seeds that are already in the tomato, they're going to dry, okay? And then over winter, they're going to overwinter themselves. They do that beautifully. Seeds are really, really good at that, especially ones that have been in the tomato, dried out on their own, and then reseeded on their own, man, they are resilient. It is amazing how resilient they are, and that's the research we should be doing to figure out how we can make ours that way. But anyways, uh, as they do that, it's gonna come back next year. So, I guess thank you grasshoppers and horned worms, because now I don't even have to plant this tomato plant again next year. It's gonna come back at least threefold. That's how tomatoes work for me. I don't know about you, so I guess I should be thanking them. But I'm gonna move over here to this side. Actually, let me get all this, you can still see. So even in the ivy, you know, the trumpet flower, I do the same thing with it. Um, also known as bindweed, I've done other videos on that, but it's good for you. And I treat it the same way, I put mulch underneath it and it is a good companion plant for me that I want coming back year after year. So as long as I mulch it the same way I'm doing these tomatoes and these um, beans and I don't let it overtake the tomatoes and beans because what it could do and what people are worried about it doing is wrapping around the tomatoes and beans. So as long as I don't let it do that, bindweed is a friend, dude. Bindweed is a friend. Bindweed is more than a friend. Huh. All right, let's put it up a little more. I carried it. Can you see me? Let's see. Can you see me? Okay. 
but find weed is more than a friend. It is something that we need in our gardens and it is something that we need in our yard. But anyways, keep pulling the weeds and then you add the mulch. You spray the neem as you go. I guess that is it for me. Let me jump down. So yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> I'm gonna stay out here. I'm gonna mulch this whole bed. Maybe tomorrow I'll come out and mulch the next one because mulching is a process and only do it at night. Also, I mean, there's Coon Cat, that silly cat. I knew she'd come out when my video was almost over. That silly girl, I've been looking for her for a while. That silly nut. So hot today, I think she's just like, oh, oh wow, look at that. You know what? Let's take it off the stand. Let's see how far that golden rain tree travels. That seed, wow. Yep. That was very far. So it wanted to grow its golden rain tree in my garden. <laughs> that's pretty cool to know they can even go that from this way so I can see it easier. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Wow, from there it came. From whence it came. Pretty sweet. Hi, Cooney. How you doing, girlfriend? She killed a mouse the other day. Yeah. You trying to tell me something? Let me pet you finally. Oh my gosh, we might get a pet from Coon Cat. Are you kidding me? What's up, Cooney? Your pets are rare. Hi. Are you gonna let me pet you? How you doing? How you doing, Cooney? Man, she is so cool because she was kind of a feral cat that was just here when we bought the property. The previous owners didn't really get a pet a lot, and I'm sure I've told this in other videos, but bear with me, okay? And she has just been, I don't know, become an integral part of our family. We really enjoy Coon Cat. She's a lion. We've never really had a cat love like you, Cooney. We're usually dog people. I know. In some ways, we feel she might be half dog. We're not quite sure. Definitely half lion three-quarters line let's be honest yeah she's pretty sweet we thought about <laughs> uh ben and i were talking about if there were some sort of disaster scenario you know we watched that series alone and <laughs> if there was a disaster scenario and you just had to bring one you know 10 items i'm taking nine coonies and a lighter right i mean i don't even know what else i would need nine coon cats and a lighter. Thanks. Appreciate your time. I don't even know if I'd need a coat because Cooney would kill so many things that I would just be... <laughs> Alright, and some thread. Eight Coon Cats, some thread, and a lighter because Coon Cat would kill so much. I'm just saying, right? <laughs> I'll just sew it all together like a huge blanket. It's perfect. I don't know why no one's thought of that. Anyways, having fun. Coon Cat's a fun girl. Yeah, she's a fun girl. What's that? Oh, my rotten tomato. Okay, well, if you've made it this far, you obviously really like animals. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. It has been a fun time. I'm glad we got the opportunity to do it. And Coon, you're chilling, baby. Alright, are we done? What do you think of that tomato? I know. Strange. Kind of don't want to turn it off because it's it's like she always does something funny on the way out. You know, she's just a. I really enjoy watching animals here. I think that that's been there have been so many joys. I always say I think that's my favorite thing or I think that's my favorite part. Blah blah blah. Honestly, if there's a heaven on earth, let's call it Grand Fan Farm in my book because I really have enjoyed every bit about this place and I. I don't know. I feel good about it. And I feel like the animals feel good about it. And they all know we're trying to do our best to help them and raise them and all that. And we're trying to do it the right way, right? I mean, we're trying to do it the natural way, the right way. And I uh, don't know, man. Feels good. Feels good. Now you get a highlight on my wound, my stab wound. I'm doing a video on how to survive a stab wound for all you preppers out there. But 
It happened, didn't it, Coon? All right, girlfriend, should we peace out? Should we peace out? All right. Okay, well, that's it, you know? And I appreciate all of your support. Use your mulch and stop tilling your land. <laughs> Lots of questions, I'm sure, but enjoy yourselves and good luck and good health.